I need you to quit barking and scaring the shit out of me, bandit. What up, nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to The Nerdy Narrative, a channel where I like to talk about all sorts of fun bookish-related things in the science fiction, fantasy, horror, and manga genres. In today's episode of fun, we're gonna focus on that horror genre, and I'm gonna give to you my opinions and thoughts and a little bit of a spoiler-free review about Chapel Street by Sean Paul Murphy which was published in July of 2020 by Touchpoint Press. So let's start off getting a little physical with it. I absolutely love that it's the trade paperback size. That is just the absolute perfect size for me as far as my opinion. The cover art itself is just absolutely freaking stunning. I just can't get over it. It is definitely creepy to look at. The cover is nice and sturdy material so it's gonna hold up over time. So yeah just the physical quality in my opinion is top notch. I think they did a really phenomenal job with it. Next let's get into the background behind this book and ultimately the reason why I read it. The author reached out to me via email and said hey I have a book that I think you would really enjoy and he was right. It's like he knew exactly what to say to get me to read this book. Those of you who have been around the channel a while probably know exactly what that was and it is the fact that the story is based on true events that happen in the author's life. Now the book itself is fiction and so the background behind the writing of Chapel Street. The author and his family moved into a home in Maryland in the spring of 1974. The terror that the family experienced while living there nightly footsteps, banging, the occasional appearance of something, those type of things just really took an emotional toll on the entire family. Sean Paul Murphy has a blog, which I'm going to have linked down in the description box down below, that gives you some insight and a little bit about these events that occurred and why he did not specifically write his and his family story. Instead, he took a fictional approach now, once you read the blog and you read the book, you're going to see the parallels and similarities between the two stories. To me, a horror story is best when you don't know anything about it. So I actually read Chapel Street first, then I went and read the author's blog about the true haunting of the house that he lived in as a child. And that scared the stuffing out of me. I immediately saw the similarities between the two stories and understood where things came from in the story and it just gave me chills. It just absolutely gave me chills. But if you're not sure that Chapel Street is a book for you, then I would recommend reading the blog first. It won't spoil the story, but it'll kind of give you an idea of some of the things that you might read about happening. The author notes that the reason he wrote Chapel Street was largely due to guilt. While nothing actually happened in this home while he and his family lived there, he did have two siblings that later committed suicide. They don't know if the entity in the house that they were dealing with was able to extend its presence and affect his siblings or if there were just signs that they missed. At any rate, some of the family has suffered feelings of guilt due to what happened in their family. So Chapel Street feels to me like a fictional exploration of the author just kind of delving into events, trying to make sense of them, and just come to terms with what happened. For him, I imagine it brought back a lot of terrifying events from his childhood and a lot of trauma. But for us as readers, Chapel Street is a horror novel that explores so many different elements. Religion, evil, romance, mystery. And all of those elements are just threaded together in a fascinating tale of good and evil, which is a premise I have absolutely loved ever since my childhood when I got into reading Frank Peretti. For some reason, I just absolutely loved the thought of actual angels and demons on Earth fighting for humanity. I have just, I, I have always loved religion. I love learning about all types of religions, why people believe the way they believe, and just the absolute beauty of it. While Chapel Street is a horror novel, it does focus heavily on suicide and how suicide affects 
friends and loved ones in the aftermath. The religious journey through this book of the main character Rick, I just lived for. That whole journey just made it so real and just made Rick so relatable. I also loved being inside his head. Um, he just felt very honest and some of the things he experienced about himself, I just, it was just kind of like a relief. As a female, there are a lot of things that I am insecure about, second guess. Just being inside Rick's head and him experiencing it from the male side and getting to witness it made me feel good. Like I thought, okay, so it's not just girls who think like this or experience these types of feelings and emotions. So I mean, Rick, so at this point, Rick felt like an actual existing human being that I knew. Once he became that real to me, everything that he experienced throughout this book, I just felt, I felt all the way through. I, I'm not ready to let go. In the blog, the author mentions this could possibly be a series, uh, which really made this little reader happy because I would love to experience more with Rick. To briefly summarize the plot, we have our main characters, Rick and Terry. When the story opens up, Rick and Terry are sort of friendly rivals. They both travel around the Baltimore area visiting cemeteries. They take pictures of the different headstones, mausoleums, all of that sort of thing, research the people buried there and upload them to a site called Resting Place. And what that does is it helps people uh, basically trace their heritage, their relatives and find each other. And what I mean by them being friendly rivals is they can go onto the site and see if someone has located a relative and the request will come in to upload a picture of the burial site. Rick always kind of sees that as a challenge to beat Tombstone Terry, as he calls her, to rush out and get a picture and get it uploaded before she can so he can have more completed requests than her. Uh, so as you've probably guess that's where our romance element comes in. So a request comes in, Rick rushes out to the cemetery to get a picture before Terry can. And a lot of times when Rick is out filling requests, he will also just walk around and anything he sees interesting, he'll snap pictures of and just upload. So while he's out filling this request, he sees this other gravesite and it's very interesting. All of the flowers, have died. It just, um, there's a portrait of the woman buried there that just really kind of made his skin crawl. But he went ahead and snapped a couple of pictures anyway and uploaded those to the site resting place. The uploading of the pictures of this mystery woman sets off a whole stream of horrific events, which ends up drawing both Rick and Terry right into the thick of it. So the book is a bit of a spiritual journey as these two work together to try to find out who this woman is, why is it connected to them, which also leads them to uncovering some very surprising events from the past. And so the race begins for Rick and Terry to solve the mystery of Chapel Street before they find death at their own hands. I really enjoyed my time spent in Chapel Street and it's one of those stories that meets and explores so many different elements really well that it makes it easy to recommend for different categories. If you like reading about any of the elements that I mentioned, you know, the mystery, the romance, the horror, the religious aspects, if you like reading about any of those, you would enjoy this book. It currently only has 20 ratings on Goodreads with an average of 4.45 stars. I myself gave it four stars and I sincerely hope the author finds a way to just evolve and continue what he started in Chapel Street and make it into a series because I'm just here for it. You know, I don't even care if he continues combining all of those elements or if he just focuses on the Christian fiction or just the mystery or, you know, if we just get more of the spiritual warfare horror part of it, I don't care. If he makes this series, I'm invested in it for the long haul. And so guys, that's going to do it for my thoughts opinions review about Chapel Street by Sean Paul Murphy. And here's what I want to know from you guys in the comments. Which aspect or element about Chapel Street interests you the most? The religious journey, the spiritual warfare, horror type, mystery, romance? Let me know down below. So uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review today. I hope you have had a wonderful start to your morning. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you soon.